Okay, uh, the question came up about the FOMC and what impact this may have on the markets. Well, for those of you who have been uh, with me for a while, you've heard me on my YouTube channel talk about the, the FOMC as far as giving you a, a history of the FOMC's effect on financial markets going back to the late great 1990s. Well, that effect has diminished over the uh, past few decades, and it doesn't affect the markets the way it used to. It used to be back when uh, Alan Greenspan was the Fed chair, we had Greenspeak or Greenspan speak. And whenever he talked, it roiled markets in a huge way. Uh, we've never seen those times again, and I, I don't know if we ever will. It used to be when he opened his mouth, he would move markets literally just by the words that would come out of his mouth or not come out of his mouth. You had to interpret what he was saying. You had to interpret what he didn't say. Then you have to interpret how he said what he said and how he didn't say what he didn't say. All types of stuff. And we had it down to a science, so we knew what to expect. But it was a rule that you did not trade on Fed days. The reason being is because the market gyrations were astronomical. An average of 600 points within two seconds. I repeat, an average of 600 points would move in the matter of seconds. The Dow would move up or down 600 points within seconds followed by the NASDAQ moving the equal amount of points, 600 or so points, and the S&P would move at least about 110 points. This would happen over the matter of seconds. That's how fast it would happen, seconds. If I were to average it out of all the times the market moved like that, I would say over the course of maybe two minutes. That would be the average time, but normally it would be seconds. And... There was no way you could win because you would have these spikes to extreme lows and extreme highs simultaneously. And the the way it would go about doing it, I mean, you would just be decimated if you tried to, to, to catch it. You wouldn't catch it. It would clip you on both sides. You'd just be destroyed because it would swing up 600, swing down 600 instantly. You're done. There's nothing you can do. And if, and, and you'd be clipped on both sides immediately. It was just a, It was a crazy crazy time so now you know looking back you see that the fed has far less influence over the markets now as far as when the announcement comes out so you can see markets move i think that, that uh, it, it's gotten all the way down to about maybe maybe 30 points 50 points on the dow i mean something really crazy not a lot uh, of volatility like back in the day. Nevertheless, the Fed fund futures are pricing at 100% chance of a rate increase anywhere from a half a point to three quarters of a point. That's huge, historically speaking. Uh, we would get these amazing moves that I was talking about back in the 90s, early 2000s, with a quarter point move up or down. Now, it's, you know, they're talking about moving it a half to three quarters, that's that's unprecedented. Those were rare moves back then. Rare, like I don't even know if I can remember or recall, mentally recall a time where they did that. Um, so with that said, if the Fed does move the markets, uh, it will be because of a surprise, a shock. Like let's say they do nothing, absolutely nothing, no raise, leave rates alone. Uh, that would be that would be a shock to the system. We don't know how the market will respond to something like that. Uh, they could lower rates and say we're we're going negative interest rates. That would be a shock because no one's talking about lowering rates more or less going to negative rates. It would be another shock. Another possible shock would be a quarter of point raising it because they're factoring and expecting anywhere from a half to three quarters. So. Anything less than what is being 
predicted to happen would correlate to a shock to the system. Anything beyond what is expected would be a shock to the system. Right now, you can make the case that the market is already pricing in this rate hike and the market is saying we are okay with it. We're okay because we've come to terms and the realization that rates have to and will be going up. Because you said, Mr. FOMC, you said, Fed, with your economic data, that we are at a historical point. You said in your government data that the unemployment rate is at historical lows. You said in your data that there basically is no inflation because you've X'd out fuel and food. You did that because you know that if, if you used f uh, food and fuel, it would show the truth about the overall economy. So you've taken that out, Mr. Fed. So now by, do by massaging that, those numbers, it shows everything is going well. This is 1928 all over again. Everyone's doing well. Happy times are here again. Blah, blah, blah. So anything above and beyond or less than what is expected would be a shock to the market. We just don't know at what velocity this shock would be to the market. We have no idea. We just don't know. With that said... Would it be prudent to be flat and not put on any new positions? I would say yes. Do you have to jump out of positions that you're already in? I would say no, unless those positions are significantly influenced by the Fed's actions, such as if you are long, let's say, Exxon stock or something, then you don't necessarily have to quiver in your boots. If you are along the dollar, you probably should be concerned. If you're trading any of the bonds, you need to be out of the market. Yeah, pretty much. Um... Trading mining shares, you don't really need to do so much with the mining shares. However, these interest rates decisions will and could affect the precious metal space if it's a shock, meaning that the announcement is a shock. And the reason being because an inflationary environment is good for gold prices. All right, that's why a lot of people got into it because of hyperinflation, right? Dollar destruction. Anything less than an inflationary alarm is not going to shock the gold market. Right now, the price of gold has fallen significantly from its recent highs. Why? Because it too is pricing in this interest rate situation. It's saying mm, there is no inflationary cause for alarm, so let's readjust the gold price to reflect the irrational exuberance, to borrow a phrase from Alan Greenspan, to the markets. Everyone is, 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 is going into paper. Everyone's going into cash, per se. They're going into the market. They're going into stocks. All right. They're going into paper hard hard body. They're going after the, the, the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been in strong demand as, as stocks is, and so is oil. Why have we seen this? Because the Trump presidency is said to be kind to these particular markets. The Trump presidency is supposed to be kind to the oil barons. It's going to be kind 
to those that invest in stocks. So you have to ask, why is that? How is that? Well, keep in mind, President-elect Trump is a businessman. He is a mogul. He is a real estate genius. He made his money in real estate. He made his money in real estate, commercial real estate to be exact. Therefore, he is not going to do anything that is going to hurt or destroy business. And all his decisions are going to be favorable to business and economic expansion and economic growth. All right, so you're going to see less social welfare Democrat programs coming out of a Trump presidency than you would under a, let's say, Hillary uh, Clinton presidency. So all these things are going to be positive for stocks, positive for earnings. Now, of course, uh, raising rates can cut into earnings. Raising rates can cause commodities to go up because the, the price of storage and interest, remember futures contracts, commodity futures contracts are priced using storage and interest rates. They have to come into play because you're talking about future prices of things, of goods, all right, of commodities, okay? So all these factors come into play. You have to look at all of that. It's the reason why this Fed announcement is so, you know, of, of concern is because not just because it's the end of the year, it's the last one of the year, but because of the changing of the guard. We're going from a Democratic White House to a Republican White House. It's a big deal. And you have to look at that. So there are a lot of uncertainties are uncertainties and in general the markets hate uncertainty but in this case they're liking this uncertainty because they believe that based on what they do know whatever comes out of the FOMC is going to be favorable overall for the marketplace therefore do not expect for the Fed to shock the markets or harm the rally in any way. This is the time of year where we have what is called a Santa Claus rally. Notice how you have not heard the term Santa Claus rally at all this year. Here we are two weeks away from Christmas and you still have not heard the term Santa Claus rally in the stock market. Why is that? The reason being is because we haven't been bearish and we haven't been down. There is no bear market to talk about. There's no bear market to prop up. You have a Santa Claus rally at the end of the year primarily because when something is bearish, they're trying to encourage people to take money off the table and to help lift the markets going into the new year. Also, there's window dressing. All the big mutual funds and hedge funds and funds funds want to say that they were, they're, you know, they're long, the best performing stocks of the year. We own this, you know, stock. Here's our prospectus. So there's a, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but you're not seeing that this year because everyone's already been in the stock market. And you're not seeing a lot of money coming off the table. You're not seeing profit taken. Now, it's still not the end of the year yet, but we're two weeks away from Christmas, which means we're three weeks away to the end of the year. And so far, you're not really seeing signs of profit taking. If anything, you're seeing continued accumulation. The stock market is being accumulated. It's not under distribution. It's under heavy accumulation, and it's only going to get wilder. I don't think we've even seen the beginning of the accumulation yet. I think they're going to push the NASDAQ 100 to close at above 5,000 by the end of the year. We only got three weeks to go, and we can definitely do it as we are only 130-some points away. That's nothing. You've seen the NASDAQ in the last couple of weeks move 200 points in one trading session.
So 136 points is no problem. All right? That's all we need is 136 points. And we're there. That's right. We would be at 5,000 in the NASDAQ 100. So, NASDAQ 5,000 and Dow 20,000 within the next two to three weeks. That's what we're going to close. We're going out on a high. That's what's going to happen. And I think we're going to have a reverse January effect from last year where the markets roiled back. I think this time they're going to scream and break out like lions. That's my take on it. See you in the trading room. Markets in a huge way. Uh, we've never seen those times again, and I, I don't know if we ever will. It used to be when he opened his mouth, he would move markets literally just by the words that would come out of his mouth or not come out of his mouth. You had to interpret what he was saying. You had to interp interpret what he didn't say. Then you have to interpret how he said. Okay, uh, the question came up about the FOMC and what impact this may have on the markets. Well, for those of you who have been uh, with me for a while, You've heard me on my YouTube channel talk about the, the FOMC as far as giving you a, a history of the FOMC's effect on financial markets going back to the late great 1990s. Well, that effect has diminished over the uh, past few decades, and it doesn't affect the markets the way it used to. It used to be back when uh, Alan Greenspan was the Fed chair we had Greenspeak or Greenspan speak and whenever he talked it roiled Mark what he said and how he didn't say what he didn't say all types of stuff and we had it down to a science so we knew what to expect but it was a rule that you did not f trade on Fed days the reason being is because the market gyrations were astronomical. An average of 600 points within two seconds. I repeat, an average of 600 points would move in the matter of seconds. The Dow would move up or down 600 points within seconds, followed by the NASDAQ moving the equal amount of points, 600 or so points, and the S&P would move at least about 110 points. This would happen over the matter of seconds. That's how fast it would happen. Seconds. If I were to average it out of all the times the market moved like that,